Chapter 46 Rules at MI5 Photography is just along from the main theatre. There are rows of screens where guests can scan their cruise card, and artificial intelligence throws up every photo which they are recognised as being in. Jason is dressed in a suit, ready for the evening. Before dinner they sell, during dinner they create more work. Hunter, wearing a white shirt but no jacket, has pulled Jason to the side. How many on your team? Five, including me. They're all working for security tonight, Hunter firmly informs him. They can't know why. I think everyone knows we have a killer on board, sir. No one knows what we know. We know nothing. We haven't got a clue, Jason panics. And look what happened to Commander Phillips. The problem, sir is that I just realized the team is getting killed. Jason is smart, which is why he runs the photography department. Recording wounds and evidence was interesting, but now he sees the danger. Jason is worried and looking for reassurance. Your staff must never know the details. That's the first rule of working in intelligence. What's the second? I can't tell you that. This is scary, super scary, Jason worries. Yet another reason you tell them nothing. Do your cameras take video? Hunter asks. Yes, but it rips through the battery. Can you work from local power? Yes. I want you to shoot video. Don't miss a thing. Simple, not dangerous. Occasionally manually fire a flash so it looks like you're taking stills. But you can see the little red record light. Not if it's covered up, right? I get it. Put a photographer at each of the main entrances to the buffet. Are we looking for the murderer in the buffet? Everyone must eat. A loner, someone avoiding the camera, film them while they think you're not. Jason puts his hand out, wanting reward. Hunter pulls it down. You're paid by the company, not for security. Hunter eases forward. He is a huge, imposing unit not to be argued with. Forget it. I'll talk to your team. You're fired. You can't fire me. I'm from head office, and I'm listing you as non-cooperative, a suspect, and putting you on office duties pending a career review. When we duck. A better idea would be to leave an unmanned camera on a tripod constantly shooting video we use a second manned stills camera to hold people up in front of the unmanned one. They refuse, we have them anyway. Good. That's better. We all work for the same team on the same ship. But my department has its own targets to meet. I've just suggested more pictures, not less. Jason watches Hunter walk towards the main theater and stop at two maintenance men on a stepladder. They are erecting a security camera to the ceiling that will cover the main thoroughfare to the theater where Bogdan was killed. Jason knows the effort is to try and make the killer's playground smaller. Chapter 47. Relax, don't do it. In the hotel management offices behind reception, staff are not used to walk-ins. The puzzled group of junior officers surreptitiously watch Hunter at a computer. To date, staff have provided data to Ruby's office when requested. Having this man at the desk is different. He may work for head office, but the on-duty manager was the one who called their head of department. Roy Stevens, hotel manager, approaches Hunter. Are my staff looking after you, Witoski? He asks. Perfectly. Roy holds his hand out to look at the sheets Hunter has printed. I wondered how long it would take you to arrive, Hunter says. Roy flips through the sheets. Benny Raymond's customer profile and booking form, his social media profiles, groups he belongs to, and a newspaper article about the much younger Benny. Local hero, Roy observes. He was stabbed while trying to save a shop assistant from a mugging in the local deli in Miami. Does that make him angry? If it put me in a chair, I'd be angry, Hunter says. Angry enough to kill? He couldn't get his scooter to the theater box. All the laundry chute. Regular good guy, Roy says, 
handing the first few sheets of data back. In a shit world, that means he might be grateful to be of use. You could have asked. I'm asking, Roy. I need all the help I can get. We have a killer on board. I need to claw back any minutes and seconds I can because the shit is getting near the fan, Hunter says. Roy rocks his head from side to side, not sure how to answer. Let's talk, Roy says, leading Hunter into his office. The two men relax either side of the desk. If I had a bottle of something, I'd pull it out now, Roy adds. That only happens in the movies, Hunter says. Yeah, but you need a drink. These two have not had much to do with each other, but there is an instant easy connection. Maybe because they're not under the pressure of studying the crime boards. You got an easy way. You could be a therapist, Hunter says. Not yours. Why? There's too much shit in there. I wouldn't want that to hit the fan. Oh, that hurt. Did it? Not really. You know what you're dealing with. You are a quack. I've seen enough of them. It's nice to have someone new to talk to. I'm not hitting on you. I looked you up. You're married. Though that means little from my experience. We've just moved from Madeira to Miami. Not that we had much to move. I read the news articles. I never knew security was so dangerous. We got a house in Coral Gables now. We're the police patrol all the time and are never more than a block or so away. Elaine feels safe there. Now it's time for kids. That's what happens when you marry someone younger. Do you play chess? Used to. Love to play, when you have time. My excitement starts and stops at running this hotel. And it's a pretty small hotel compared with my last ship. Had my last ship been on land, it would have been one of the ten largest hotels in the world. As I don't need to tell you, Guests at sea never eat out and expect to be entertained every minute of the day. I needed a rest. How's the small ship for you? Hunter grins. Having a serial killer on board? Roy thinks, then answers his own question. Not affected me much yet. That's what my buddy Kieran would have said until last night. You're the armchair shrink. Someone on board has flipped, and we're not seeing the red flag. It's going to be obvious. It always is, Roy suggests. What does the sign say on your door? Friend, so come by any time. Is that a polite way of saying our meeting is over? Not at all. If I wanted you to leave, I would say. I mean, come by and talk. No one has asked me anything yet. You feel ignored? Maybe you've flipped, Hunter mocks. I work for a huge corporation. You get used to being ignored. Roy, you're welcome upstairs any time in the incident room because I've not seen a signature to link these murders. Not anger, not thrill-seeking, not financial gain. And if it's attention-seeking, it's not over. What's left? Hunter ponders, then points at him as a light comes on in his head. What? Roy worries. Hunter stands up, shakes hands with him. Roy tilts his head. He wants to know what. Everywhere has its dark areas at night. Roy gives the slightest of nods. Hunter is having a breakthrough moment. I did say all ships are the same, but a world cruise is different. Not everyone is happily married like you. Let's have a dinner or a beer one night. Love to. Hunter opens the door. Hey, a tip, Roy says, stopping him. Hunter waits to hear what it is. Don't run around so fast you forget to appreciate your team. That's when it all goes wrong, when you stop appreciating people. Hunter nods. Chapter 48. Bring your cameras. Hunter enters the photography office, a space tucked in the ship behind fold-out panels that now have large artwork, but used to be for shelves of printed pictures when money was wasted that way. Hey, paparazzi, anyone fancy a drink? The team turn, puzzled because none of them has ever met Hunter and Jason has told them nothing. Sally, a female photographer, wears a black cat suit and looks ready to go out. Bill, dressed in a white shirt and a black bow tie, waits for further explanation. The other two, 
Kuse and Michael are shy. They don't engage and continue putting the cameras away. First rule, Jason says, questioning Hunter's demand for secrecy. You said yourself they'd guess they were looking for a killer. What? Kuse asks. Michael and Sally just nod at each other. Both had guessed it was something like that. You didn't tell them, Hunter says. No, you told me not to. Well, now they know. But hey, I'm buying, Hunter offers. Have you been drinking? Jason asks, worried. Crow's nest, Hunter states. You had your hand out, now I'm buying. He leaves. Free drinks, Bill says, slapping Kuse and Michael on the back. He wants something, Jason says, suspicious. But free drinks, Sally argues. Hunter reappears around the door. How good are your cameras in low light or no light? Jason stands up, knowing there was a catch. Some of them are brilliant, Sally says. Most are rubbish, Kuse adds, about to recite the full technical specification of every camera they have. Bring a couple along. The door closes. Hunter slips into the back of the dark theater. The swell of the ocean has begun to change. On stage, the singer is resetting his position every few stanza. Benny is easy to find because he is in the area for mobility scooters. Hunter leans in and whispers in his ear, Crow's Nest, after the show, I'm buying, join the team. Hunter enters the bar and finds a table at entrance level. He orders a pint of lager and turns to see Jason leading his team in. What is it? Jason asks. Jason, for the first time since I arrived, I feel like I'm on holiday, Hunter tries to sell. Jasmine is hovering by Hunter, who indicates they can all order on his card. Gin and tonic, please, Sally says. JD and Coke, Jason says, and the others order beers. Large, Jasmine asks. Go for it, Hunter says, as he sees Benny driving in. What do you want, hero? I'm not a hero. I haven't done anything yet, Benny says. I'll have a Merlot, please. Jasmine taps the order into her device and heads towards the bar. The boys in the team watch her move as she goes. Sally playfully slaps them one by one to avert their eyes. You're a hero, Benny. I know it. You know it, Hunter says. Hey, Sally, have your picture taken with Benny. Hunter slips back to the photographers. They point their cameras at Benny and Sally but behind them is the whole bar. He instructs them. The job is to take the picture of everyone behind them in the bar. Those who never want to be seen. Those who hide. So, zoom. Pick them out. Zoom. No such thing as a free drink, Jason sighs. Listen, it's a free drink appreciating your service while you work. Benny is enjoying the attention and the team. Jasmine arrives with the drinks and waits just out of picture. Can we do this in the wedding chapel? I want to freak my mom out, Sally says. She keeps telling me I should leave the ship and start a family. No, we'll do it here.